Hello. Today we're going to do some manipulation with a spline. Show a couple of dimensions that don't easily show up. And I'm also hoping to get an idea in here to PTC for manipulating splines because that is something that's sorely lacking and that SolidWorks has got covered with more basic interface. So I'll show where the problem is in this video. Stay tuned. We're going to start with a new part. I'll start with empty parts. It's okay. And we'll play there. Okay. So I'm going to build a spline in a sketch. I'm going to show the dimensions that deal with it. So create a sketch. Let's just make a two point spline here to here. Where that is, don't care. So I have standard dimensions. I'm going to leave them floating for now just to show some things. If I do a dimension and I first provide the starting angle. Of course I can do this with tangencies, but I'm going to click the spline. I'm going to click the end point of the spline and I'm going to Pick a linear element and place the dimension. This gives me my angle. Uh, you can do this with tangent uh, line elements and things, but this is an easy way to get your angle started. Do the same thing over here. One, two, three. Let's make this one 60. There. I have a spline. The spline is. really nice curvature to it obviously because we only constrain the ends angles unfortunately I can't keep that comb on but we can't so the other dimension is the curvature of the spline so now that we've set it it actually knows what the curvature is that's it and that's it the moment I'm going to say okay. So now you see good spline. I'll go to analysis put the curvature on this permanently by saying saved and get up the quality if you want. Yeah, let's get it out there a little further. Okay. So that's a beautiful spline. Nice smooth curve. Now watch what happens when I manipulate this. I left this dimension free. Notice how the curvature is locking that geometry and really making a mess of that surface. In most instances you'd think that's a mess. Or even going here and saying 75. That just isn't very pretty. So, um, but maybe that's exactly what you need. So we're going to leave it there for right now. Another thing we ran into was how do I get tangency to that curve? And I can't do it within the sketch. But I can do it as a subsequent sketch. So I'm going to do a new sketch right there. I'm going to draw, I'm going to select the curve as a reference. Okay. I'm going to draw a line from here and I'm going to let it grab a tangent. Perfect. That's all I need. I just want it to be tangent. So now if I edit this, as I drag it along, it's going to stay tangent. And this is beautiful. This should be possible within the sketch, but not. That would be a separate idea, but that's important. Curvature. Um, so the spline, again, I edit it, notice how my reference line stays there. Notice I get the actual spline without curvature control and the new spline with curvature control. I don't get that, but okay, it's there. Now here's the idea that I want to propose. There's no way that I can do a 
slider type of editing. All I've got is unlock value properties or edit or exit edit dimension. Don't want that. What I can do inside the sketch is what I want to do outside of the sketch. And that should not be difficult and it should make splines more manipulatable. If that's a word. Um, similar to a lot of other CAD programs. So I'm going to select the four dimensions I added just for the fun of it. Right click and notice you have a modify. We're going to modify it and see what that brings up. This wonderful little dog dialog. I want this dialog in the normal model mode instead of sketch mode because now I can sit there and manipulate the spline to my heart's content. It's unfortunate the comb isn't following. It really should, but I can see I can make shapes that are acceptable to me. For instance, if I want a duck, I can make that real. Get out of the sketch, regenerate, regenerate and my comb comes back. So that may not be the best. This may be acceptable. So we, we manipulated it and it's still tangent. So we'll go analysis. Save. Let's turn that off for a minute. We'll go back here, edit this, and sure enough, it still it stays tangent. It doesn't care. Uh, its range is obviously limited at this point. So, very nice, huh? But again, I want to go to editing this. I want to be able to click this dimension, this dimension, that dimension, and that dimension. And edit them all at once. Same way as I did in the sketch. There is no such thing as modify here that I can tell. See dimensions. <laughs> That's it. Alright, so the other part of this, let's go back into this sketch. The other part of this that I was telling you is that this curvature, if I delete it, come on, delete, no, here, select this. Notice how it cleaned itself up quickly. Here, delete. Okay, analysis, show my analysis again. There. So again, I could lock it by locking the curvature. Curvature is really optional, and that's actually a good thing for Creo. So I hope this taught a few people a few things and people kept complaining about me not putting audio in so I hope you enjoyed listening to me for the last eight and a half minutes. Good luck.